Behavior Genetics, Part 5, Genetic Environment Interactions, Personality Psychology, Dr. Michael Botwin, Department of Psychology, California State University, Fresno. Our final section in discussing the effects of genes on behavior is to look at genotype environment interactions. And there are several things we need to think about as we look at this. First of all, individuals respond differentially based on their genes to the same environment. If you think back to our discussion of introverts and extroverts and one of my favorite little introvert-extrovert study, if you remember that you can put an introvert into a loud room and they're going to kind of be overwhelmed and overstimulated, whereas if you put an extrovert into that same environment, it's not going to phase them at all. They're actually going to like a noisy environment. So an individual's performance in any certain environment is affected by the relations between their genotype and their environment. So let's look at how this works. One of the things we're going to have to examine is the exposure that different individuals have to different genotypes to different kind of environments. Now the developmental psychologist Sandra Scar uh, set up this idea that there are primarily three ways that the genotype and environment interact. And there are passive reactions, reactive reactions, and active reactions. Now, as we think about these, you also want to hearken back to our discussion of personality and the environment because these are very similar to David Buss's selection, evocation, manipulation, except uh, Scar got to these first. So let's look at them. Passive genotype environment correlations. Both environment, or excuse me, both parents provide the genes. Let's look at passive GE correlations. In passive GE correlations, parents provide both the genes and environment to the children, but the children do nothing to get that environment. Now the stereotypical example you see with that is that a child's verbal ability is usually related to the number of books in a household. And here we have a very good example of this. It looks like a very uh, well-read family here with many books and a father and daughter are reading. Let me tell you my own personal story and since it's the pick on my son David video lecture today. Let me tell one last story about David. When David was about three years old, he came up to me and he said, what should I go to graduate school for, Dad? My butt fell off my chair. Yeah, it's one of those out of the mouths of babes type uh, phenomena. And I looked at him and uh, I, I can't even remember the answer I gave him. I was so flabbergasted because even with a PhD, I really didn't know what graduate school was until I was pretty well into my undergraduate degree. And that was the environment I was raised in. I was raised in a working class suburbs where people didn't go to college. Uh, that's a whole different story. And I've got my three-year-old coming up and asking, what are they going to do in grad school? Well, after thinking about it long and hard, I figured out it was one of these passive GE correlations. My son was raised in an environment which he did not create, where the only people he was around in terms of adults were people who had advanced degrees. His father has a doctorate. His mother has a master's degree. We were relatively new in Fresno. The people we socialized with most were 
other people that worked for the university, other faculty members and university folks who all had higher degrees. So for this three-year-old, it was natural to think of, what am I going to do to go to graduate school? Because every adult around him had done that. Now, I bet you're asking the big question here. What did David go to graduate school for? Well, he didn't. He grew up and he got interested in other things. And he's doing quite well now. But he's definitely not an academic. But he's happy. And for a father, that's the most important variable. Let's look at the second type of GE correlation. That's reactive. Uh, here is my example, again, kind of borrowed from the textbook. Uh, people respond differently to children based on variables like how much kids like to cuddle. And here's a father and baby, and they're having a very nice cuddle. And there's nothing more pleasurable than holding a baby. Very pleasant feeling in most cases. And let me give you another personal story. My second granddaughter, Ava, who is now a delightful young girl, uh, when she was a baby, she was unsoothable. If we were watching her and we were trying to soothe her and get her to bed, she would tense up and throw her arms out and it would be, uh, she would not cuddle. She would not cuddle like a normal baby cuddles. She, why she did that, I have absolutely no idea. But to me, it was really frustrated, frustrating, excuse me. You can tell a little bit of emotion here because I am generally known for being able to put both college students and babies to sleep very easily. And I can even take, and, I, and I've done this, in fact, I've had friends have strangers let me hold their fussy baby. And with almost every baby that I'm given, within a few minutes, that baby's calmed down, mellowed out, not Ava. So it became kind of almost the test of wills. Can I soothe Ava? The answer simply was no. Now she's grown out of it. When I see her, she gives me a big hug now. And uh, it was just one of those baby things. She was not a cuddly baby. And we used to uh, really be concerned when we watched her uh, because of that variable. Now the last type of GE correlation is active. Now if you remember back to our PE fit, relate, uh, excuse me, person environment fit lecture, sorry, we talked about selection. And active GE correlation is very much like selection. Individuals with certain genotype pick environments that fit with their genes. So we're uh, channeling back our inner Marvin Zuckerman here and seeing a couple of individuals who have big smiles on their faces while they're falling through the air with parachutes that hopefully work. They are most obviously sensation seekers. And we know that there are some genetic proclivities to being sensation seekers. As we've talked about before, Sensation seekers lack a brain chemical, monoanalyse oxide, and their brains produce monoanalyse oxide, or MAO, when they do high-risk things. So when you see someone doing uh, a very dangerous thing like skydiving or bungee diving, or bungee jumping, not diving, excuse me, or even things like motorcycle riding, things like that, they're self-medicating. They're producing their own MAO. Kind of interesting notion there. Well, to just sum this section up, G 
genotype environment correlations can be positive, they can be negative. Uh, they can increase behaviors by being positive. Uh, they can decrease behaviors by being in an environment that doesn't fit the gene. So more and more we hear about the effects of genes on behavior. We have to remember it's an extremely complex area. I've given you an overview here, but it's been a very simplistic one. Maybe it's because I only have simple-minded genes. I don't know. We'll have to find that out in the future. But hopefully we'll see you next time in personality psychology. Bye now. This has been a We Have Couches video production. Copyright 2020, Professor Michael Bottling. All rights reserved.